welcome to Silverdale Beach and the brand new Isuzu D-Max. Now, yes, this is where we film quite a lot of our stuff, but today we're going to start a bit of a mission coast to coast. So we're actually heading down to Goodwood Festival of Speed and we're going to be there in about probably six hours. It'll be interesting to see how this is, so we're going to do a road trip and a bit of a review combined. So I think it's time to start the engine. Good, good, good. First impressions, very good. It's not that too dissimilar to the earlier variant. Thing is, I've got things like road sign recognition. And when you hear a little bing, that's telling me what the limit is. And I look down and I can see. Very cool. So you've got lots of safety. There's also a red kind of like LED light system with like bulby things here. And if you go too close to a vehicle, it'll literally say, brake, brake, brake. And this will illuminate like a strobe. My word, 36.6. Peter delivered this this morning and he said on the motorway, it's very good. He was getting just under 37 to the gallon. And there's a D-Max record, Annabelle. <laughs> so yes, we're embarking on a really long road trip and we've done it in four cabs before and it's a pleasurable experience. Because that's it, you get all your mod cons and you get all the things that you need. Comfortable seats, they're even heated. And yes, I've got air con, but you should know me by now, I'm not gonna use it. I prefer the windows down. Off on our road trip. It'll be interesting to see how much diesel we use. We're leaving Silverdale with 3,448 miles on the clock. Yeah, it's a bit of lean, but it's a pickup. I almost forgot, you've also got lane keep assist. Annabelle, first impressions. Really good. It takes what you've got from the previous models and just builds on it and makes it even better. It'll even weighed 800 mil now as well. Oh, that's huge amounts, isn't it? We've just driven out of that mottled area. You'll see that our lights have turned off again. As soon as it detected it was slightly dark, the lights came on and it was very quick. We're now connected to Waze so we know what's going on with the traffic. Also, I've got cruise control and that's the one thing that you do want on a long journey. It's easy to operate as well, just on the steering wheel. This is one torquey engine. Six speed as well, so. Where's that going? Never trust anyone on roundabouts. Power down. Drop the hammer. Nice and easy to join traffic in this. Just put my foot down and, oh my word. That was an early jag. Dark car spotting Annabelle. Cool. So yeah, you've got all your mod cons like I mentioned. Cruise control, essential. Would have been nice to have adaptive, but happy with this. That's on the last minis, 1.3 injection Cooper. Should have white dials. I drove one of those at the harbour. So we're sat in Roadworks now. This fuel computer is really helpful. And surprising, we've still only used two bars of fuel. It's doing very well. You can tell it's got a torquey engine. We're travelling along at 54 miles an hour on the speedo, which according to Waze is about 52. Oh, it's telling me it's a 50 again with that road sign recognition. Doesn't let you forget. That's a good thing really. But I'm in sixth gear and it's just ticking along at one and a half thousand revs and the other thing is it's nice and refined in the cabin so you can't hear engine noise unless it's under heavy load gearbox is like you'd expect in something like this quite a long shifter and there is a little bit of movement in it but it does exactly what it says on the tin it gets into gear and it's not particularly notchy either which isn't bad for something like a pickup because let's face it this kind of system's been going quite a while and speed trap reported ahead. Thank you, Waze. The thing about the Isuzu D-Max is it's been going for so many years and they've just kept it the way it is because arguably it's probably the best pickup on the market because of its capabilities. That's it, it's a fun vehicle, isn't it, for a road trip? It is. But we've used four cabs and loads of things, haven't we? I think we went to Goodwood in a four cab last year. The year, year before, before. <laughs> obviously last year is a complete write-off, but the year before we definitely used a four cab. I'd have to look it up, but I 
I yes, think it was right. in Navarro. And that's the other thing about, because of all the way that they're doing all this development with the engines, they're far more economical than they used to be. It used to be hard push to get, uh, let's say, 27 to the gallon. And I'm now registering 36.4 to the gallon. That's amazing. Yeah, it's good. If I put my foot down at, let's say, motorway speeds, there is enough power there, as you can talk, as you can feel, to get you out of trouble if you need it. We're just coming up to Warrington, so we've been on the motorway 40 to 45 minutes. Nice, comfortable seats, and it's fully electric as well, and heated. It's going to be a one hell of a road trip, isn't it? <laughs> If Annabelle pans around now, you'll see how much stuff we've actually got with us. Equipment much? The thing about a pickup is it's excellent off-road because of the body on frame chassis. It can move around like nobody's business and they've got a lot of travel as well and a high ride height. So the question you ask yourself is how does that transform onto motorway and A-road driving? Well, to be honest, it's not bad at all. It will jostle about a little bit, but if you put a load in the back, that's pretty much fully eliminated. And you do get a little bit of body roll as well. And yes, if you do take it into a bend sideways, it will lean, but that's what you expect. If you travel at 70 miles an hour on a motorway, you can just quite happily plod along and you've got all your safety as well. And it's just like having overwatch. Overall, it's just good. Suspension, I suppose in Annabelle's words, it's more bounce than bump. <laughs> well, it's true though, isn't it? When you it think is. about it, the way it travels. Yeah. If you hit a pothole, it's not a bang, it's like a whoop. Yeah. Because of course it will take all of those kind of bumps and bangs in its stride. Yeah, it does. And it's just so smooth. Yeah. It kind of eats up the road and goes with it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Now the one thing you'll probably notice as soon as you get into it is the gears are very short. So if you put your foot down at first, it does feel like you're doing about 15 miles an hour. You're not, but that's how it actually feels. But if, if you're aware that it's going to be a short ratio, then you can take that in strike, can't you? Yeah, well, that's it. You just get into second quicker. Yeah. I mean, realistically, in something like this, you can pull away in second. I mean, most of my driving on the A-roads before, I was doing about 30 miles an hour in fifth gear. Realistically, I could have probably been in sixth. And that just economises as well. No, I'm very impressed with this. The lane keep assist and other safety <laughs> measures on this car can be a little overzealous. If you start indicating left and it's detected something, it will not let you go left and it almost battles with you. You can override it, but it's pretty strong. Look, they're on the bridge. They're on the bridge. They're on the bridge. It's not a bridge too far. Hello, BMW. It's a bridge with police on it. Jeez. <laughs> Look, Ray Tessic wipers. <laughs> they burst into life. Yeah. Did you see what was on top of that trailer? No. Are you pregnant? You be a me. And it was a woman with a pram and a shed her arm up like, woohoo, I have a baby. But the pies. The pies. The pies. Pies are calling. Yeah. I don't quite know how many miles we've got because I can't work out where he's just points and he shouts at me periodically, but that's about it. We've got 214 miles left and it's aiming to get us there in just over three and a half hours. Which is an arrival time of 5.25. And then we can meet Mr. Joseph Lloyd and have some fish and chips. Woohoo! There is obscurity left, right and centre on the motor. Yes. Here's a uh, Opal van going for it. It is going for it. It's booking it, isn't it? Yeah. It's not keeping to the uh, speed limit. He's running Dutch plates. They cannot catch me. I'm going to run. I think. Diaz. Look, Diaz. Yes. We have those. We yes. have three deer in the garden currently, in yes. case you're wondering. Two Baba Diaz. Yes. Twin babies. Yes. And Muma. I think Dada will pop up and see them later on. You will. After, Ooh, after, after Mum has done the um, bulk of the rearing. Stealthy, stealthy cameras. Stealthy, stealthy cameras. So yeah, as Annabelle started to mention, then the weather is holding, isn't it? Yep, and it's been quite a smooth ride, and it will continue How to be so. How is it as a passenger? Very comfortable. I love the fact that you're up higher and you've got great visibility. Yeah. You've got the grab handles for getting in and out, makes it you know very easy for me. It's also damn handy when you're off-roading, because this thing... Yes, yes. 
in case you're wondering, we're in a Suzu D-Max DL40. So they've kind of done away with the rest of the range. So you don't seem to get things like XTRs anymore. You get adventure, utility, and business. Yes, this is all-purpose DL40. Yeah, which, which means it's, well, it's suited to pretty much anything. You can do all of them. Because that's it, I'm, I mean, look at this. Look at these coverings, premium materials, and digital aircon as well. well it's and it's dual, dual zone. zone. Yeah, dual zone aircon. Yep. It's very comfortable. It's nice that you've also got tactile buttons to press and manipulate for that. Does you have an electric seat, or is it manual? I do not know, actually. I have not tried to adjust it. Let me have a feel. Manual. manual. I have a manual seat. So driver is electric and passenger is manual. Well, that makes sense. Yes. We have the USB there, 12 volt socket, auxiliary port, and the, it's basically plug and play for Apple CarPlay. So we've got Waze and Spotify running there. Nice Old school meeting. handbrake as well. Essential for when you're off-roading. Yep, and I have noticed it looks like the off-road system is finished. Finished, changed. So you've just got this button here. So I'm going to have to play around with that afterwards to see exactly what it does. But you've also got descent control and the one that you always need. So you could disable your parking sensors because let's face it, they go need mental it. on a green lane, don't yes, they? They do. But this what? is the new fuel computer. And it shows me the vehicles in front. And if I press this button here, well, my lane keep assist is really, really trying to take control. 37.3, 38.3, So yeah, good mileage and lots of options on there as well. It's an interesting one because it's extremely good at the off-roading side of it, but in a way it's also been a bit agricultural in that way because it's uh, about as raw as they come. And but that remember means... how much fun we had when we went off-roading at night with the, well, exactly. with the laser lights on it? Yeah. Oh, that was so much fun. The thing is, with agricultural comes utilitarian and robustness and levels that basically you just can't break you know it's not like a Land Rover where all of a sudden your wiper will fall off <laughs> it just True. isn't no it isn't you're right no they're just they're bulletproof now you've got rain tenting ones unfortunately at the moment I do not have any baked goods to fling at you I have had a butty though cheese and jam and a bag of mama and crisps ah banging we've also got some banging <laughs> yeah, very, very Lancashire there. Ah, oh, banging lad, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Back raving in the 90s. Oh dear. How's your night, lad? Ah, banging, yeah, banging. Sound a bit like, um, what's that guy called? Garlic bread. Oh, Peter K. Ah, oh, Peter K. Well, it's not Peter K for. Peter OK. No, 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 no. What's the character's name he plays in Phoenix Nights? That's who it is, isn't it? Garlic bread. I don't know his Garlic. name. Garlic. Right. Let's call him Mr. Phoenix. Mr. Phoenix. Yeah. Can't, I can't put a speed camera there. Why? They'll slow down. They'll see club. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly What's that on. What's that bloody photo going to do? I don't know. Wait a Ah, look, Warburton's. Is, is that a road? Oh, she, uh, do you think a lane may be coming to an end? I think I'm going to get past. Not seeing his indicator come on, so I don't need to hook her right. That wagon looks like a huge loaf of bread. <laughs> Which one? The Warburton's, because it's like the orange toasty. Ah! Orange toasty. Orange indeed. Orange. Am I saying that weird? Yes. Yes, you are. Orange. You're totally saying it weird. Oh my god, so now we've gone from giving much love to Phoenix Knights to Maybe. the middle. <laughs> oh my god. So our next stop's going to be Norton's Cane. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Norton Cane's? Nor yeah. Norton's Cane? Norton Cane. No so oh, you don't I know, don't know either. either. Yeah. <laughs> we will film it when we get there or when we're leaving or at some point there. We'll stop at McDowell's and get ourselves a Big Mick. But you've just had Cinti Cheers, and you want a Big Mick too? But you don't know how to use microwave? Oh god, number three. Okay. Oh, look at three, the Three, four, because I've just gone for coming to America and you missed it. Oh, we're going for a Big Mick. Yeah, <gasps> oh, of course, yeah. Oh my word. Oh. 
rain sensor wipers are doing their job. I am the spaghetti. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, nice attentive rain sensor wipers are speeding up without me having to do anything. <laughs> It's nice to have a pickup or utility vehicle with this level of safety and having all the mod cons and well, that's pieces, it. isn't that? In case you're wondering, we've literally had the vehicle about four hours, so I'm going to have to read the press sheet and tell you things like brake horsepower. I'm assuming it's a 1.9 turbo diesel engine, but don't quote me on that. Because we just don't know. No, that it's because probably had some emission, em over there. Yeah. emissions work as well, but get out of my lane, you foolishness! Because the thing is, say... Yeah, soft touch plastics. No, hard. Oh. But, no, it's soft touch here though, isn't it? Oh yeah, it? that's soft touch. And you've got a nice little armrest here. But I tend to drive like this. Van arm. <laughs> Van arm, yes. Then quote Van arm. Oh look, there's Jowie. Hello Jowie. Hello Jowie. Jowie in the Sprinter. Hello look. I can't quite work out what's legal and what's illegal of that plate. Stealthy, stealthy. Ugh, I missed it because I was on your mug. I left that at home, it's on the table. Mm -hmm. I do. Yes. So we'll sign off for now. So we've got Check back in with you. Yes. Here in a little bit. Breaker, breaker, what now? Ten four, good buddy. Now, I said it had a safety suite, but what it's doing essentially is. I think it's like a cross traffic monitoring system. Because if you've passed a car and it thinks that you haven't got enough space to pull in front, it will actively stop you. Which is damn good for a pickup, to be honest. It's, you know, it's one of those things that's really handy on one of these. Same as the reversing camera. It's a very intuitive system, isn't it? It is, yeah. And that's it. As long as you obey it and don't try and override it, it shouldn't see you wrong. With the fresh Let's for the toll. The toll. Every time you go onto the M6, you are there at least 40 to 45 minutes. Take the MG road trip. Ugh. That was what, 12 o'clock at night? Mm -hmm. And we were there for about two hours? Well, yeah, we were in standstill traffic at one point. Yeah. In the middle of the night. So no, the moral of the tale is pay the six quid, 20 quid, whatever it is, dependent in vehicle, and um, go on the toll. Nice Use road the right that you can um, to stay to the right get a top to end of. Laziness. Uh -huh. Looks like Go straight on for 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Super is going for it. No, the no, he's Aha! The no, that is not how to change lanes. You numpty. That was lunacy. Yes. Anyway, we're heading off to Norton's Canes. Okay. Norton. Say you don't know how to say it either. Toller heads, card payments only. Okay, better get that ready. That'll be COVID in you know. Good afternoon and welcome to the biggest private racetrack, sorry, motorway in the UK. The top speed is 70. Does anybody obey it? No. Do we? Yes. Midland Expressway. Put the hammer down. Savitio in three miles. We've done quite well actually. We've done we? very well. Ten minute break here, if yes. that. Have some drinks and then catch up on a um, snack hour. Okay, Norton Keynes is what it's actually called. And that is a road chief. Road chief. Road chief. Yes. Chef cat. Road chef cat. <laughs> so yeah, we're making very good time to be honest. I don't know how many miles we've done, it's probably about 130, isn't it? Yeah. And we've used about a quarter of a tank, which I think is damn good for a pickup. What are we getting for average consumption? Uh, if I scroll through. Let's see which wheel drive we're in. 36.4 still. Perfect. Yeah. Loving it. Was it here at this roundabout where that stag yes. ran across in front of us that one time? When we had the cater pod? Yep. Uh, okay. That was many moons ago. It was. Turn right. No. Don't be foolish. In a quarter of a mile, 
What? At the no, roundabout, that's he ridiculous. Turn right six in a quarter south. of a mile. Yeah, <laughs> nothing like a, <laughs> a bit of a what's the word? Foresight. I think Miss Ways is trying to get us to go back onto Limiter Way, not realizing that we are stopping for a comfort break. Yeah. In one thousand feet, at the oh. roundabout, take the first exit. Was that? I think it was the ding, ding, ding. sensor. The weasel, big, 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 big. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell that we've been watching Lovecraft Country? Oh dear. Yeah. Look your surroundings for safety. Hmm. Look your surroundings for safety. Did I read that correctly? Oh, that I can't. Now, there's something wrong with that, but I can't quite put my fingers on it. Where the service is, and what a quick walk round actually. I've not really seen it properly. So the new D-Max, new design language as well. Seems to have two few pegs on that chrome grill. It's a bigger mouth as well, but as we know, most designs of vehicles now, well, grills are becoming rather prominent. This is a Valencia burnt orange. We've also got a bed liner, the Suzzle. So yeah. Ooh, keyless entry. A decent ride height on this. You've also got an extra step as well, and that reaches to the rear. One thing that they haven't got is a footrest. Interior. Construction's not so bad. I mean, there is a little bit of movement in things, but it's kind of what you expect from a pickup. Also, some of the finishes here. But overall, it's been neatened up very nicely with a premium insert here and some stitching. Door bin's not the biggest. You can get some paperwork in there and a cup. And look, electric seat. And a must for pickups. Adjustable headlamp height. And start stop. Perfect for those Euler zones. The thing about a four cab and heading to somewhere like Goodwood means as long as you're not taking passengers, you're sorted. This is us traveling light. Saying that we are away for six days. Goodwood, then the BMC Leyland, then SMMT. Now last time we had a pickup, we actually had a covered bed. So it meant that we could store things in the back as well. But on this occasion, we've just got a bed liner. Soft opening tail, love it. If you have the keys in your pocket and the windows are down, you walk away, the alarm will sound. And then people down Silverdale Shore will laugh at you. Lewis. We're here, we're going to have a quick break and then we'll set off on our journey and it's probably about another 170 miles, something like that. I'm not doing badly at all, are we? What up? Race Transporter 6 delivers supercars. You can kind of tell when you look at this kind of thing, using a disco as well. Well, Annabelle, it wouldn't be a road trip without the heavens opening, would it? Nope. Yeah. Look at it. Whoa. a bit much. Yes. Looks like we found some good wooders. That looks to me like a hot rod. Yeah. Look at that. We're just coming up to the toll plaza and we have used literally one third of a tank. Now I've driven many other pickups and there's no way we'd have got that far on this little diesel. We just wouldn't. We're at the toll. We are. We're ready to launch. <laughs> are we ready? We are ready. The light is green. So, but the ah, trap is not clean yet. 4,000. And uh, that's it. 40. Third gear. So I do about 57 in third gear. Talking of base, so now it's in fourth. Up to motorway speeds. Hardly any wind noise. It feels nice and well planted, but considering it's ride height, it feels very stable.
wouldn't be a trip without going past Pro Drive. Pro Drive! There's a Rosas getting some proper flat foot over Get 70 action. Uh, yeah. Alright. Any more? There are a couple, Gabna. Don't you just love it when you're on a little road trip and you see something like that? A Toyota Celica. The Leighton Hall show last week, you saw the GTI 16 on the earlier model. And here is where we're going to be soon, well, at the end of the month, with Lady Dorothy. Yay! Running the retro run for Silverstone Classic. Well, it looks like our luck may have run out, Annabelle. Mind you, we've still got over half a tank of juice. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, we've got 115 miles left to go. Yes. It's not dark, but you are wearing sunglasses. Road sign, the Vista, and we know where that's near, Blenheim Palace, where we saw the Durando launch. Lovely. Okay, worse and worse, isn't it? Yes, this is a deluge. Deluga. Because the rain's got so torrential now, we've just had a warning that says, clear windscreen, front camera unavailable. But if you just look at this, it's not surprising. It was momentarily, so I'm thinking it's back activated again. Freaky. Getting worse. Yes, and there's no fog whatsoever. It's purely rain. Has that warning come up again? Not yet, which is good. Oh. There you go. Back up to the limit. Amazing, isn't it? How fast they go and then go. Yeah. I mean, literally, because you're traveling, obviously you get to see a small chunk of storm and that's about it. But how intense was that? I mean, look at how black that cloud is. Yeah. And yet a little further on is in peeps of blue sky. And the other thing is, at no point did it actually block my view. They always kept up, and every time that the rain worsened, they got faster. Yeah. Whereas some system would struggle wouldn't they yeah yeah the, the timings are particularly great the ds7 fantastic we were going to take the m25 but it was going to add another four hours uh, so no we're taking the a40 no to south don't go anywhere near the m25 when there's football on at wembley oh good one now we're traveling at the higher motorway speeds i just thought i'd give an update on how it drives it's got power, like, permanently. It's amazing. If you put your foot down, I dread to think how fast it'll actually go. I think it'll quite easily get to three figures without any problem whatsoever. Plus, the other thing, on the dual carriageway, it seems to corner rather tightly. It's, it's not what you really expect. From such a large pickup? Yeah, well, yeah, for a pickup full stop. And that's the thing. You can just sail along it just goes. Yeah. And you put your foot down and it goes more. Well, so we're in six gear, aren't we? Yeah. Well, we're in six gear, aren't we? Yeah. And there's, there's power to spare. That's it, yeah. It's a talk of the hills, especially. You put your foot down, you can just power away. But especially if you're towing, that's what you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. On a motorway, it just feels well planted. It's got the power when you need it. And the steering is good enough to be cornering at high speed on a dual carriageway without excessive body roll or any type of lean. It just seems to take it. It's perfect for a long haul for a family. And it's big enough in here as well. The A329 uh, Stadhampton. Mm. What a lovely place. That's so how we're going. Right. Towards the village hall. Picturesque cottages here, aren't there? Stealthy, stealthy camera. Stealthy, stealthy camera. Well, that's the thing. When you go on the A-Rose, you get to see some of these hidden treasures, don't you? You do. Next class. <laughs> when you start delving into, ooh, look at next class. <laughs> well, that's it. We never used to see X classes. We've seen two today. Yes. S2000, we've got one of those soon. We've used just over half a tank. And we've been doing a fair bit of, like, random driving, hasn't we? Yeah. We've done well over 200 miles, I'd say now. Oh, easily. We've still got half a tank. 
that doesn't compute with me with a pickup. And we're getting 35.8 to the gallon. So now we've switched to A roads, we've lost 0.4 of a mile traveling at anything from say 30 up to about 60. I think that's very good to be honest. Yeah. The only thing about the D-Max is you have one engine, this, the 1.9 and that's a turbo diesel. It would be nice, whether it's on the cards, I don't know, to see maybe a hybrid powertrain, even if it was just mild hybrid. Back there in September won't be for salon. Yay. This is where Annabelle tells you where we are, because I have no clue. We're heading towards Abingdon. Actually, this is A34S. the- A34S. This is the feeder into, all the way down to Goodwood. So it did get a lot of runoff from London traffic. So this is the road that we came back on in the Navarra that time. Yes, it is. Abingdon. See, I was right. Abingdon. So we actually know this road. Yes. Okay. So road we'll 75. The steep. Because every year we end up on this road. Update. We are about 70 odd miles from Destination. Which is Bogner Regis. I did say Goodwood Festival of Speed, but because it's coast to coast, we thought we'd find the sea. And Bogner is by the sea. We've got just under, I think it's two bars under half a tank, which... That's really good. I'm impressed with that. That's excellent. And what is our average? Yeah, and what's our average? Is, and my word, what is that small car? Look at this beauty. Trying for some description. It is. It is. to grips with this gearbox. It's pretty good 90% of the time. The odd time you all get the odd clunk. <laughs> the thing is, you know it's strong. It's literally bulletproof and because of that it feels so industrious. Industrial. Industrious I, I think is the right word. Yeah well it does. It just feels like grr, I can get the job done. Well that's definitely industrious. Look at that plastic van. It makes sense why this is economical. I'm traveling at about 43 miles an hour in sixth gear going up a hill on a motorway. And I can just put my foot down and it will continue to pull away. No laboring, nothing. And it's very smooth, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Chichester! Wait to festival. It's obviously third. Which way? Pongonor? Pongonor. Pongonor. Pongonor Regis. That's where we're heading, coast to coast. What I have noticed with this is, as I said on the motorway, it's nice and quiet. But if you're doing low speed engine work, well, Yes, you do hear it. Huge. <laughs> that was so bad. We've made it coast to coast. The Isuzu D-Max and there's the sea. And this is Bogner Regis. We've got Goodwood tomorrow. And we'll see how it is in the fields and the mud and who knows what else it will find there. It's been giving us 36 to the gallon as well. I think we've covered about 330 miles today, and it's not skipped to be. We've now arrived, and it's Goodwood tomorrow. So yes, the Rover 45 V6, and this is the actual first time that I've ever seen it in person. And I will be going to the BMC Leyland Show with Joseph on Sunday. 
Listen to that. Welcome to Goodwood Festival of Speed 2021. 